I feel like that ego's construct of less bad, more good. People look at situations like cancer or death of a loved one or losing their job or some kind of big personal injury as some real negative experience where it sounds sounds like universe dished you a gift which was masked in something that you couldn't politically correctly say that and then the grief welled up and 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 so you're, you're pushing it away pushing it down as much as, as long as you could with the tv addiction i'm sure whatever you could possibly do to cope with what is sounds like the most i can't even comprehend i don't know i don't know what that feels like i've never been in the situation mm. that i co can comprehend that that much grief would come from myself so to hear that feel that and then boom it just burst open so and then that's where you found the love through the in intense pain and this is such a common story with spiritual enlightened leaders where so much gets taken away and within that everything gets given like uh, Gandhi get put in prison, uh, Nelson Mandela had to was put in prison, and then through being locked up, he found freedom, and then he walks out as president of South Africa. Uh, or even Ram Das, who is a speaker, and then his voice gets taken away when he has a stroke. He can't do the one thing that he wants to do, and he finds more enlightenment through that. And it's like these painful situations create the depth and the opportunity for the rupture of the ego for people to find this. So you activate and initiate all sorts of people, people that are in lots of different situations in life that find you on their path. Do you have any way that you try to emulate or like how do you introduce people to this? How do you initiate people without murdering a family member? <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> well, that's, and that's been sort of my mission really is to, to serve this, this love so that not everyone has to go through that to encounter it. So, I mean, I think there's one piece of wisdom that my wife gave me before she passed that I know is really relevant to you and I've been hearing about your quest. It's In some ways, it's, it's about how do I be in the world and also be connected to spirit or how do I chase my dreams but not become an egotistical fuckwit, you know? How do I honour honor that those tensions? And she said to me one time, it was a week, a, a week before she passed, and what I was feeling was this intense beauty of the moment and, and with her, you know, that each moment with her felt so precious, like just bringing her a cup of tea felt like a miraculous act, you know. And, and at the same time there was this pain, this brutality that her, her body was failing, she was sick. It was like so painful and horrific. And I remember sitting with her after I brought her one of those cups of tea and just saying to her, I can feel that my, my system doesn't understand what to do with these truths because I can see the beauty of life, un, like unflinchingly the utter exquisite beauty of each moment is there in my face. And at the same time, the brutality, the violent, horrific brutality of life is right there in my face. And I feel like I can, I can deal with either of them. I can open to the beauty and go, wow, life's a miracle. Or I can, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of survive the truth that life is brutal and, and you know, do, do my best. Mm. But I don't know how to, how to live with both of them seem true. It was like I really took it to her in her sort of awakened space. Of, I, I, it's like life is going, these are both true and I don't know what to do with them. And she said these words that I reckon I'll finally get their final meaning on my deathbed. But it was that put one foot in the beauty and one foot in the pain. And, and live from there. And mm. what that has meant for me is that not trying to resolve duality in life. You know, we're going, we're going a bit deep now, but that there is that part of me that wants more of the good and there's a part of me that wants to get away from the bad and that that fundamentally sets me up to rest to fight with life. Mm. Whereas if I can put one foot in really that life is beautiful and, and honour that and receive that and put one foot in life is brutal and, you know, horrific and, and, and live there and not try and, like, resolve them, not try and um, overcome those truths, not try and escape to the beauty and run away from the pain. But if I can inhabit those two fully without moving, then I can engage in life from a different place and that's, that's my training, that's my path is to learn to do that and my experience is the more I do that, 
the more the love that is just reveals itself. It's just here. Yeah, it's not something mm. I need to meditate or align my chakras or anything to get to. It's just the truth of what's here when I'm not pushing or pulling away. It's just it's just that which is everywhere through everything. It's the living fabric of existence that's only hidden from my eyes when I'm trying to get something and I'm trying to get away from something when I stop. Mm. Yeah, you know, woven in the very fabric of everything. Mm. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. That's a lot to digest. It's <clears throat> a lot to digest. And you say, uh, it just feels like everything I say after that. It's like one of those um, spiritual epiphanies that can lead to spiritual apathy. <laughs> it's just like, well, there's the big surrender. Okay, comes from that. Yeah. What, there's nothing to do, nothing to pursue. Well, and, and uh, that's again for me those two feet because I've wrestled with the same thing I've heard you talk about wrestling of surrender and choice, yeah, like those yeah. two things. And for me, I've tried to make surrender the truth and then I become apathetic and a bit of a floppy, like, oh, I'm just trusting the universe, but no, actually yeah. I'm just abandoning my gift of free will. And I've also tried to be like, the, I'm in fucking charge of my life. I am the creator of my destiny. And, and I've felt the rigidity and tightness and the denial of, of the, the beauty of the moment. And so for yeah. me, that, that surrender and choice is, again, something like one foot in absolute total surrender, one foot in absolute pure choice, and that that is how I, I'm learning to live, you know, to not put one over the other, not to try and make them fit together, but to recognize the incredible beauty of this moment and surrendering into what is and the miracle of free choice. I get to choose my own direction and destiny, and my job is to learn how to just have both of them be true without trying to make them fit together. They don't mm-hmm. I don't they do. Yeah, such a refreshing perspective. I, I attempt to wrestle with this myself with like, I've got this model called the three choices. And it's like, we can create, mm. celebrate, or elevate. And it's like, essentially, we can be disciplined, mm. we can surrender, or the universe is just forcing us to grow in some way, whether it's emotional alchemy work or, hey, you go to a plant medicine ceremony or do a red dragon ritual <laughs> with Arian and <laughs> Neville. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> um and i love that i love that but you you said don't align like you know it's not just about meditation or aligning the chakras but then you also teach people that so <laughs> yeah i'm I'm hearing that the transmission is life is going to be the biggest teacher when they thrust you into either brutality or beauty and that's like a real it's there but i know for a fact from experiencing it and you have all these containers that you create situations for people to do this inner work in a journey stuff. What have you found to be some of the most powerful ways that you've created a, like a initiation opportunity or like a way for the embodiment of those two polarities to meet in mm. have, have, like, what what for me has been really amazing is, is recognizing the body. So in that experience I shared with my wife, there was a real awakening to love, like the boundless truth of love. But my journey since then, that 13 years ago, has really been about recognizing that this body, this, you know, uh, what is the unconscious mind, which is this vehicle that I move in, it doesn't know that love. And so my my job is to sort of help teach it the truth of that love so it can go deeper and deeper into the layers of my being. And so Mm -hmm. the the 13 years since then have been a lot about unlocking the body to um, open to the truth of that love and inhabit that love more and more deeply and more and more fully. So Mm -hmm. that's been my personal journey and then that's what has led me to work with others. So, you know, most of the work I do now I call embodiment or creation. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, embodiment is that ability to go deeper into the body and open to the pain, open to the ecstasy, and and uncover the secrets that are hidden right here in this body, in this breath, in this belly, in this heart, you know, in the body that's mm-hmm. so miraculous. And so I love that work of helping people open, you know, through breath work, through movement, through ceremony, through intention, through all sorts of things to 
access more deeply the, the miracle that's here. And what I love is I don't know what people will find. I just create spaces where they find it. And then I just go, yeah, when they crack open and the tears come out or when the, you know, the dragon spreads its wings and they remember how powerful they are or whatever happens. You know, there's that. And then the other stuff is really around the word and creating and the power to, and this is what inspires me about you so much, is the power mm. to do what you're here to do. You know, that mm. this miracle of free choice that you have. 